In mathematics, and very much in calculus, a lot of work is done on functions. Now, sometimes we use the term a bit loosely. We've got to make sure when we speak about a function that it actually is a function. So let us take a look at what a function is. There's a couple of variations on the definition of a function, but it comes down to the same thing. A function is a rule that assigns to each input value exactly one output value. Now, we're very used to having x's as input values and y's as output values, but these can be any letters. We must just identify which is our input and which is our output. Now, in this first example, y is a function of x because each x input value, each value I choose for x will result in only one value for y. For example, if I pick a number 7, 7 times 2 is 14 plus 5 is 19. I do not get two possible values for y. Same with squaring a number. If I give you a number x equal to 2, then you know 2 squared is equal to 4. It gives me out one number. So each x value, each input value gives me a unique output value. So let's look at a case where this is not happening. If I've got x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, this is not a function because, let's take an example, let x be equal to 4. If x is equal to 4, then I've got 16 plus y squared is 25, which means y squared is equal to 9. Therefore, y can be plus or minus 3. So there's two possible outputs, two possible y values, and that is definitely not a function. So when we look at a function, it's very important that it's defined for each input value. There's a unique output value. If we look at the sketches of these, the first one is a straight line, cuts the y-axis at 5, the x-axis at minus 2 and a half. The second one is a parabola. The third one is a full circle. All right, I'm not going to put all the intercepts there, but that's what it looks like. Now, the difference between, the significant difference between these is the definition says each x value gives me only one y value, which means anywhere if I look at my x value, I only get one y value out. So for every input number, I just get one output number out. That's for the both of the first two. Yes, the second one, I've got two input numbers that gives me the same output number. Minus one and plus one, both give me one out. That's not a problem, as long as each input number gives me one output number. But now for the first third example, I've got the circle. And we've just found one input number when x is here equal to 4, I get two output numbers. Sometimes what we call the vertical line test is used if I've got a sketch with the input number on the horizontal axis and the output number of the vertical axis. The, the vertical line test, can sh we can use it to show us if it's in a function. It's not a proof, but it is a show me if everything is set up right. So if I draw a line anywhere, a vertical line, if it cuts the graph more than once, anywhere on the graph, then it's not a function. So for the circle, we see the vertical line cuts the graph more than once. This is called the vertical line test, but just watch out a word of warning when you use the vertical line test. Your sketch needs to be set up with the input values on the horizontal axis, else it doesn't work. So that's why I'm saying you can use it as a tool, but rather go back to the definition. So another thing about functions that we want to identify is what we call the domain and the range. The domain of a function, we just use a capital D for it. The range of the function, we use a capital R. The domain of the, a function is all the input numbers, the range, the set of the output numbers. So if I've got y equal to x squared, I know my input numbers. Which values of x can I swear, square? I can square anything. It's all real numbers. While the range is my output values, now if I rem Look at the sketch again. What am I getting out? What are my y values? It's everything from zero and more. So an interval notation from zero to infinity. You can also have this in set builder notation or another notation, but that's one way of writing the range. If you're not familiar with the notations, please go look at the playlist of sets on this channel and you can see the different types of notations for sets of numbers. Our next one y equal 2x plus 5, my input numbers, all real numbers, and my output numbers for that straight line is all real numbers. So that's a bit of a boring one. 
So let's look at the next one. Root of x plus 2. Now, we, it's not always quick and easy to sketch our functions, but this one should be pretty easy to sketch. It's over there. It's only positive y values. The x values start from minus 2. So the domain of this function, if I have the sketch to use, it's much easier to read off. It's from minus 2 to infinity, all x values. While the range, the output numbers, I can see it's all positive y values. So it's from naught to infinity. But now if I didn't have the sketch and I want to calculate algebraically, I can look at this function. It's a square root of x plus 2. So I know algebraically x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0. Because whatever is under the root can only be positive or 0. So that means x must be greater than or equal to minus 2. Just take note, the domain and the range are sets. It's a set of input numbers and a set of output numbers. So you can't just write x greater than or equal to minus 2. That is not a set. If you want to write it as a set, it's a set of all real numbers x, where given x is greater than or equal to minus 2. So it's a technicality, but just take note of the difference. The next example, I'm not going to sketch that one. I've got a fraction in my function. For input numbers, I know my denominator. I can't have it equal to 0. That's going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to 4. So x can't be 4. So I must exclude 4 from the domain. So I'm going to say the domain is all my real numbers x as long as x is not equal to 4. Now, just a reminder, if I write it like this, it's the same as saying x is a real number given x is not equal to 4. We've established in the section on set theory that if I just say x, I'm assuming it's the set of real numbers being the biggest and most common set we work with. Our next function, and I'm now only moving to looking at domains because the input numbers are more crucial to look at so that you know you're using the correct input numbers. The range is interesting, but the input numbers give me a bit more. So I've got a function here, the root of x squared minus 25. Now yet again, x squared minus 25 is in a root, so we know it must be greater than or equal to 0. There's a bit more work involved there. That's x minus 5, x plus 5. So there's a bit of work to figure out where that is greater than or equal to 0. You've learned different techniques on how to do that. You can pause now and see if you can find those x values. What you're going to find is the domain is everything from minus infinity to minus 5 included, union with 5 to infinity. So all the elements from those sets is my domain. And the last one here, another fraction. Just take note, if we factorize the denominator, it looks much prettier. x plus 3 x minus 1, let me just check, minus 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, we've got it. So that's the factorized version. Now the reason I want to factorize it is because that shows me what to exclude from the domain. It's all the x's as long as x is not minus 3 and x is not equal to 1. So I'm excluding minus 3 and 1 from my domain. So just to look at notations, there's different ways of writing functions. Most of these, I've got x as my input number and y as my output number. I can write a function as y equal to 2x plus 5, where y is the output number. Or I can call it a function of x. Or I can say x is a function that maps my input number x onto 2x minus plus 5. I could have different variables. I could have different letters. f can indicate a function. g can indicate a function. h can indicate a function. And many more. So just take note of the different types of notations you can encounter when looking at functions. In the next video, we're going to look at combining functions. How do I add, subtract, and so on? How do we combine functions?